Today I'm going to be riding from Saguaro's to Pines. We started today out about the 2,000 foot elevation level and now I think we're somewhere around 3,500 or so. We are right across the valley from the lower Bradshaw Mountains. Very picturesque and if you go a different way than we're going today you'll end up in Crown King but we're not going that way today. Uh, we're going to try to take as much dirt as we can from we are, where we are at right now to uh, Coconino National Forest and hopefully Apache Made Mountain. The KTM is back in service. That's kind of why we're out today testing and making sure all of the changes that I have made are correct, accurate, and bolted on properly. I have replaced all of the uh, items that the dealership screwed up with brand new OEM parts and I have replaced them myself so I know that they are in good shape. In addition to uh, the owner or the OEM stuff, I put on a new brand new set of um, shock socks on the forks. I have put on a brand new uh, unifilter. Uh, I've got two two sets now, which is really good. The other one's already oiled up, cleaned, and ready to go for the next change. And I have replaced my Outback Motor Tech skid plate because uh, we broke that off. And I've replaced it with a KTM Power Parts skid plate. It is a little bit lighter, a little bit smaller, but it seems to be just as protective as the other one. And hopefully it won't break off every three to 5,000 miles. My purpose here is to show mostly dirt. You'll probably get a little bit of pavement here or there. Uh, this is mostly a dirt ride. We will be popping on and off uh, Interstate 17 and uh, US 260 or Arizona 260, I forget which it is. A little bit of pavement, but I'm trying to keep as much dirt as possible. Well, that's what you get for stopping. That's why I hesitate to stop on a lot of rides. An army of Jeeps, dirt bikes, grocery getters, all kinds of folks have gone by. And I try to wait about 10 minutes to let them get beyond me. Getting dusted out is not my favorite thing. Riding right through Bumblebee. Very small little town. They wanted to run a highway through here and a small amount of residents made a big impact and really kept it from going through. They're the ones that got to live here and I know my little community is fighting off a large city from annexing us and uh, if you want to keep your way of life that's why you bought your house there. It's a beautiful little valley here. Somewhere over there on that ridge is the uh, sunset rest area off of I-17. This is actually the road to Cleeter and then beyond that is uh, Crown King. But we are going to take a little right hand turn up here.
This is the intersection that we're going to peel off of. If we go straight, that'll take us to Cleeter and Crown King. And if we go this way, it'll take us back out to I-17, but we'll go by Cortez Junction, and we're going to go uh, over, under, or through, something like that, across I-17 to uh, Bloody Basin Road. Most of what I had to take care of on this bike was fasteners, a body panel that they messed up, but most importantly, the air box. The screws were stripped out in it. Luckily, it did not entrain any dust. It was really clean. Very happy about that. But most of the rest of the stuff was just fasteners and bits and pieces that take four stinking ever to come in. It was probably about four weeks, five weeks to get the air box in, a bunch of screws and things like that. And then the uh, skid plate was about three weeks, and you can't ride this bike without a skid plate. The Outback Motor Tech one, the mounts used to break about every three to 5,000 miles, they would split. And you get this high frequency hum. That first time it happened, it freaked me out. I thought I was losing a motor or something. But this time, it was actually one of the mounting tabs on the actual skid plate. So that skid plate was DDFD, done, done, flipping done. As far as the airbox goes, I know some people say, why don't you get the Rottweiler or some other aftermarket one. I'm just not a fan of spending $600 on a device that already works properly, is easy to maintain, and I have no issues with. It spent 18,000 miles doing perfectly well. until some gorilla-fisted shopkeep over-tightened all of the, nut, the bolts in there and stripped them all out. So I do have to say there could be a better design for it, but like I said, in general, she works pretty well. Especially with the unifilter system that I have. Very beautiful mountain views, the Bradshaw Mountains. Definitely out for a shake test today, and this washboard road's uh, for sure going to help us diagnose anything that might be loose or rattly. Coming into the little community of Cortez Junction. I believe this was a stage stop at one time. And it was a quaint little town back in the day. This place right here used to be a general store, then an antique shop. People used to stop by and get a soda and ice cream, stuff like that. And we we're gonna transition to Bloody Basin Road here some cool old buildings out here, especially this barn. Beginning to fade away into nature and history.
from that junction heading uh, east. This will take us out to Interstate 17. But I need to get back to Corvus Junction, maybe do a little history vlog on that. When you go through those little towns, make sure you slow down a little bit. Those folks get kind of upset with people coming by and dusting them out. I know everybody's speed racer, but if it was your house, you wouldn't want a face full of dust every time someone went by. Howdy. As you saw, we just crossed under I-17. We are now on Bloody Basin Road. Out there is the Alafria National Monument. As you come down I-17, you look right into the into Black Canyon, where the uh, Agua Fria River is. Almost missed our turn off here, so we're leaving Bloody Basin Road. This road will take us to Cortez Lakes, not to be confused with Cortez Junction. Pretty view out there. It's Quarters Lakes. See you on the other side of it. We are on what used to be marked as the Great Western Trail. This will take us just above Camp Verde.
I just jumped onto Forest Road 618 Coconino Forest, travel along this, and head up towards the Mogollon Rim. Okay, we're turning off of 618. We're going to head over to Rarick Canyon. I guess this guy told me, huh? We are going to be up in the pines in no time.
We are in the pines. Now I'm at the base of Apache Made Mountain. I don't know if the lookout will be open or not. The last few times I was up here it was closed. But there's a nice little lookout just before the uh, before the uh, Forest Service gate. gate behind me is still closed to go all the way up to the top to the lookout. Apparently they're still chicken of the uh, plague, but we are at the lookout, that's uh, our lookout, the overlook, the viewpoint, whatever you want to call it, which is equally as beautiful as the top. Yeah, just looking off the top up here, the ride up is just, just gorgeous too. I don't know how much the camera will pick up. This is a different camera that I've used up here before. But we are on Apache Made Mountain. Uh, I believe that's either uh, West Clear Creek or Beaver Creek. Way off in the distance, you can see some uh, some rain showers out there. And just a gorgeous view. I believe this particular spot is somewhere around six or seven thousand feet i don't know if you can see the glints way out there i believe that is camp verde over in this direction it's kind of kind of hazy today i don't know if it's uh, probably dust I don't think there's any active forest fires as far as I know, none, none that would cause that much um, haze. But if you can see those mountains over there, across this plain, you can see the mountains over there. That is Oak Creek Canyon over there. And south of that would be Sedona, 
Mingus Mountains over there. Well, that's it for today. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching. Adios.